Hi YouTube, these are my adult fire salamanders. I'm going to take them out to put in this tub just to feed them some crickets and make it more easy for you to see them. So these are Salamandra salamandra terrestris, um, which is a subspecies of Salamandra salamandra. And um, the difference with these guys is they're more striped. Um, salamandra salamandra have got more of a kind of blotch pattern and I think they're more common generally. Um, but I prefer these guys with the stripes. So these, I've had them in hibernation and I thought they were looking a bit sort of skinny. So I've been kind of fattening them up since hibernation and they're starting to get much more like they were before they went into hibernation. But um, I wasn't thinking they would breed this year because I didn't think they were quite old enough or kind of big enough or fat enough. Um, but I went in the garden today uh, just to have a kind of general check of their enclosure and uh, I had a nice surprise, so I'll show you that in a minute. But you can see here they're feeding on crickets that are dusted with Nutribile. Um, and a lot of people don't realise that they kind of hunt crickets in similar way to lizards. They actually um, actively hunt them. They can sort of run at them and grab them quite quickly, actually, quicker than you think they would. So normally you're probably imagining you'd feed them on worms and slugs and things like that. Um, that's their more usual diet right this is their cage it's just in between my house and my neighbor's house just down a sort of thin alleyway um, but it's a it's a really cool place to keep them actually because it doesn't get sunshine on it so I'm not going to cook them um, but it gets a lot of daylight um, and it's a nice cool kind of sheltered spot and it means that inside the cage here you can see I can grow like mosses and ferns and things um, so here's a whole load of logs and lots of holes and things for them to go into underneath as well there's a hibernaculum which is just a place for them to hibernate over the winter which is just like a hole dug down um, this space that you're seeing here is where there was a dish which I'll show you in a bit um, and that's where the babies were born um, but you can see it's all, all the plants are sort of growing naturally in here now it's all kind of uh, established itself and yeah there's uh, bricks and things underneath for the hibernaculum so it goes really quite deep and there's no glass bottom to this tank it's just glass sides so basically any rain that comes in just goes down into the ground so they're not going to kind of drown or anything by it getting too full of water but I was fully expecting not to breed them for a year or two at least so um, this is the dish that was in the enclosure you can see it's very kind of you know it's just moss in here and it's very shallow water and it's got you know a lot of green kind of algae and stuff growing in it but it was just full of little wiggly babies um, and I thought I just had a couple but they're so well camouflaged in there when I pulled them all out you can see I had um, well there's 25 in here but I actually found another one later on after this video as well so 26 little babies um pretty cool there's one with a slight kink in its tail but all of the rest of them look perfect so this is me just putting in lots of tiny bits of um cut up earthworm and what's great about these guys is that when they eat they their little bellies get fat really quickly um so you can already see ones that have fed better uh, in the enclosure than other ones because yeah they've got little fat bellies some of them look really quite thin so my plan here is to kind of feed them all and keep the water clean so i'm going to basically rear them as if i was rearing tadpoles um so i just use spring water bottled spring water and i'll just use a sieve believe it or not you just tip all of the babies out every so often very gently into a sieve get rid of the water give it a quick wipe around put in some fresh spring water and it's very shallow you know this is less than an inch deep and then put the babies back in and then you can feed them again um, and I do this probably every two or three days um, because what happens with the little uh, bits of cut up earthworm if you leave them in for too long they can really make the water go smelly so um, what I'll do is you know give them a couple of hours maybe three hours to feed and then if there are any bits of earthworm left in there i can pick them all out with a pair of tweezers and get rid of them just stops the water from spoiling so much um 
And yeah, these guys, because they've got gills at the moment, you know, they're born with these little gills. And then what happens is, I think it only takes about four or five weeks, um, they start developing their proper black and yellow coloration um, towards the end. I think it's in about week three or four, they start getting their black and yellow coloration. And then um, you know that they're kind of becoming more terrestrial and their gills start to disappear. And then... Um, they're looking to come out onto land basically so they can drown very easily at that point because when their gills absorb they're obviously um you know they they get lungs instead and they need to breathe air properly so you've got to make sure basically at that stage that you have a sort of a sloping kind of bank of gravel or something similar sand or something like that for them to climb up out of the water um, and get onto land um, and you'll see like their their shape changes and their kind of, um, you know, their skin kind of toughens up quite a lot as well. And yeah, they're just amazing at that point because they're so brightly coloured. So I'll try and um, paste another video if I manage to get them all to metamorphose. And uh, I'll show you what they will look like because they should have quite different markings from each other. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. It's really just to kind of um, give you an idea of how to keep them. I, I think they do well outside in the UK. The temperature is really good for them because they like it cooler rather than warmer. So they don't do quite so well indoors unless you've got a nice cool spot you can keep them in. Um, and outdoors, obviously, if you want to breed them, it's ideal because... They hibernate by themselves, go underground, and then, you know, spring comes and it warms up and ev everything works properly, like all the photo period and everything that they need uh, to change, you know, the, the days getting longer and that sort of thing. It all happens naturally and as you can see by this, you know, I don't didn't think I had salamanders that were big enough or fat enough and yet they still bred and I've still ended up with all of these babies so um, I'm really hopeful like in future years once I've fattened them up even more that I should get lots more babies like each year hopefully um, so yeah so it was a really fun project and I'm really glad I did it and set up the outdoor enclosure um, I've got another video on my midwife toad enclosure that's an outdoor enclosure as well if you want to um, have a look at how I built that and I plan to do another one where I um, take a video of the midwife toads in their enclosure so you can see that as well okay thanks for watching um, don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future check out all my other kind of exotic pet videos and my videos of my armadillo and things like that and I'll catch you in the next video